After being off of our screens for almost four years, Luther has hit the big screen, and also Netflix with this latest installment, which is a feature-length movie titled The Falling Sun. With Luther being arrested for essentially taking the law into his own hands and carrying out his own actions whilst he was a DCI, now behind bars we saw him escape and try to bring down a criminal that had escaped his grasp when he was an officer. I thought this movie provided a pretty good time. So with that, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this movie. So let's get into it. Here is Luther the Fallen Son, ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This movie was pretty much centered around Luther being a good man within his heart, but doing wrong within his role. However, with what he did, he always believed he was doing for the greater good and with the hopes of carrying out justice. We started off by seeing that there was a serial killer that was out there that was essentially blackmailing people into doing things for him, even to the point of them dying. He was getting information on them by being able to tap into their systems and find out information that essentially made them fear the very idea of it being exposed, more than the death that was coming towards them. He manipulated them to the point where they would rather die than have what they had on them exposed. Luther was behind bars due to the killer David Roby who was played by Andy Serkis getting information on him released and out there in the public eye, which ultimately resulted in his arrest. After hearing a message that was broadcast to him from David via a radio signal, he worked with somebody on the outside to get him broken out of prison. And then he was doing the very thing that he was originally arrested for, taking the law into his own hands and working on tracking down the killer of Callum and all of the other people that David had claimed. Something that he'd promised Callum's mother that he would do. We got a pretty cool fight scene that was taking place within the prison, and we saw how in this moment Luther was fighting the officers and the other prisoners, but you could also see that he was fighting for his freedom. As the episode went on, we saw that Luther was working with DCI Lane, who were taking over the case. She was communicating with Luther, and herself and the police force were originally trying to get Luther taken back into custody. However, he was making more progress with the David case than what they were, so much so that once David took DCI Lane's daughter and was threatening to kill her, the both of them worked together in order to track down David, which they did successfully do to a remote location in Norway. Let's take a closer look at David. So David was a sadistic serial killer who was killing people for pleasure. It was haunting seeing just how many people that he had killed. There were around eight missing people that he murdered, which dated back to the mid-2000s, which were found in the opening scene. But we also saw that there were a countless number of people that were beneath the ice in Norway. It was a truly haunting sight, and you could see that there was just pure evil that was behind the eyes of Circus's character. We even found out that he burned his wife to the point where she was within an inch of her life for threatening to expose what he had done many years ago. He planned on doing a live broadcast where people were able to vote on whom to harm, so he was doing it for his pleasure, for entertainment purposes, and for other people's pleasure too. But why was David doing all of the killings? Well, David was doing all of the killings because he himself had something that he wanted to hide. He was hiding the person who he truly was, just like all of the people that he was harming. He had a secret, but nobody was exposing him. However, his wife was the one that exposed him to Luther and DCI Lane when they visited her, and we saw that he ran away from it because he couldn't listen to Luther anymore, hearing how he was being called a weak, pathetic man. Ultimately, we saw that Luther went after him after the room that they were in was locked and set on fire to destroy all evidence. But in the fight that was within the car, we saw that as David tried to escape, he ended up getting stuck beneath the ice and died whilst all of his victims were there around him. It was a rather fitting end for the character, being surrounded by all of the people that he had harmed, as he could see the surface but was unable to reach it. Luther in that moment managed to unlock the door via the phone and DCI Lane and her daughter managed to escape. Right at the end of the movie, we saw that even though Luther survived and we were led to believe that he was going to be going back to prison, it turned out that he was actually being kept in a safe house and there was a job offer that was waiting for him. There was an individual that was called the Chief that wanted to meet with him due to doing an extraordinary job in tracking down David. We never got to see who the Chief was, but there were a few theories surrounding who it could be. With there being a news broadcast to the public that Luther sustained life-threatening injuries, it could be made out that he died due to the altercation. After all, he wasn't in prison, 
and I imagine there would probably be an uproar if he didn't go to prison for the crimes that he committed, which would ultimately be undermining the justice system. So with him potentially being perceived as dead, we could be seeing Luther branching out into a new field of work. He could potentially become an undercover spy. Luther was arrested for his actions of being a vigilante, taking matters into his own hands and trying to go under the radar with it. This new role that he could potentially have would allow him to use his best skills and assets to his advantage. It's something I'd definitely be open to watching. I thought this movie was pretty good. I did wonder how Luther would work in the format of a movie instead of a three-part series, but I think it translated well. The case was very well developed. The villain that Andy Serkis portrayed was harrowingly haunting to watch, listen to, and try to get inside of the mind of, and the runtime enabled it to have a decent amount of pacing to it. The movie at its core was about two things, fearing something being exposed more than death itself, which we saw was present within most of the victims and even Archie, who we never found out what David had on him because he took it to the grave instead. And then there was the focus on Luther's side, which was about doing good, but doing good in the wrong way. Luther is a good person at his core, and we saw that he was prepared to die for the greater good, something that he's always been prepared to do. And with DCI Lane even voicing how Luther was a good person, but how he did bad things, the stark contrast shows that he does only do what he believes is right. I was a fan of this movie and I'd definitely be open to there being more. I would argue that having a standalone movie made it feel like there was a little more at stake due to the runtime being slightly shorter. The CGI at points was a bit off and did look a little cheap, but I can look past that when the rest of the story was engaging and provided a case that was interesting to watch develop. Andy Serkis was a standout in this movie and I feel whatever project he gets involved in, he does always deliver. His role as the serial killer was absolutely haunting. His tone of voice, his facial expressions and his mannerisms embodied pure evil. Idris Elba fell back into the character extremely well and it was like he never went away and Cynthia Erivo played her role well too. It's one of those movies that you don't necessarily need to go to the cinema to watch because it's not going to give you an amazing visual and audible experience. But putting it on Netflix is definitely not a waste of two hours because the story and the performances are there. I look forward to hopefully seeing more movies within the Luther umbrella. So, there you have it. Luther the Fallen Sun Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions and character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this movie? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>